Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles G. Pitchell. Follow us. Part 2 At the top of the park, the Orang Nursery has some new and very special residents. 18-month-old Rika and 2-year-old Bulu Mutter have got their very own playroom. It's recently been finished and the care team have made sure there's plenty to keep the two youngsters entertained. This playroom is um, big enough for both of them to have plenty of space. It's tall enough for them to learn how to climb up high and to not be scared of heights. We have a lot of housing quite close together so they always have a bit of holes within reach, so it makes it easier for them to climb around. But life hasn't always been great for the pair. Both babies are orphans. Bulu's mother died when he was just a few days old, and he came to the park from Budapest Zoo at three months. Rika arrived from Berlin after she was rejected by her mother just weeks later, so the pair have been hand-reared together by the park team and are great friends. And now they're big enough to spend all day playing in their own specially designed nursery. They have all their meals in here and they have three bottles a day. But also we feed them solid food. We put solid food near the, the top bit of the enclosure so they have to climb up to it. Just to encourage them to move around and to search for their own food. As orphan babies, it's been great to have playmates their own age. For Rika, it's really good having a, a, a little orang that's a bit, a bit older, just a bit older than her. She follows Bulu around. If Bulu climbs up high, even if it's a bit scary for Rika, she will follow him. But Rika is braver than Bulu. She, she's catching up. Because the playroom is right next to the older nursery orangs, the duo can meet them safely through the mesh. This means by the time they're old enough to join them, they'll be very familiar and comfortable with the whole group. They are really close to the other kids, so they are really used to them, they really know them, they hear them, they smell them, so it's really good that they are 24-7 here with, with the others. Lewis and the team still play with them a little, so they're used to being handled. But the goal is for the pair to be fully independent. They pretty much spend the whole day together and they don't really need us that much. They love each other, they spend the day playing with each other. They find each other hilarious, so they spend their days doing this and jumping on top of each other and, and playing around. The two youngsters wrestle with each other. The park has four chimp enclosures, one for the bachelor boys, another for Paddy's family, plus Sally's young group, and one led by Hananya, who was rescued from the black market trade in Israel. The maintenance staff have spent the last few days at his enclosure, replacing some of the older, worn-out structures and adding new climbing frames, bridges and tunnels to make things fresh and interesting. It's ready to be unveiled to 20 stir-crazy chimps who've spent the time indoors, unsure what's been going on outside. They're pretty keen to find out, but they need to wait for the primate care staff to do one final check to make sure nothing has been left behind. The staff are also putting out breakfast, distributing it around the newly transformed enclosure. The chimps emerge into the enclosure and head straight for the climbing frame. Once the slides are opened, it's a big rush to the outside, and it's Hananya who leads the way. As always, Patricia combines exploring with eating, scooping up a handful of food before climbing one of the new posts. As the group's leader, Hananya tests the new poles to make sure they're strong enough. But top-ranking female Cherry is a bit unsure about the new look. And Patricia needs a helping hand, plus a bit of encouragement from the youngest in the group, two-year-old Thelma, as she crosses the newly installed bridge. And that's not the only thing the chimps are wary of. A rather large vertical tunnel is somewhat perplexing. What are we supposed to do with that? 
Again, it's up to intrepid youngster Thelma to show them how it's done. Thelma clings to a climbing hose hanging inside the vertical tunnel. Then she confidently crosses a high horizontal log. Thelma was born at the park two and a half years ago. She swings from netting. Hananya is her dad, and high ranker Cherry is her mum, which means she'll always be top of the tree too, as youngsters inherit their rank in chimpanzee society. Thelma loves playing with the adults, and they're happy to give her attention. She has lots of loving aunties and uncles. Hanging by one arm from the climbing frame, she wriggles, then drops. Auntie Cookie is persuaded to carry her across a rope bridge from above and below. But for the others, with the new apparatus having been given the once over and approved, it's on with the important job of munching contentedly on breakfast. Marjoline is hoping Cherry will share her branch full of tasty leaves. So when little Thelma takes over the branch from her mum, Marjoline takes advantage and purloins the branch for herself, showing that youngsters only get so much leeway when mum isn't there to help. Thelma scurries off as Marjoline tucks into the branch. But it's no big deal for little Thelma. She knows there's plenty more and heads down to ground level with a little help. Testing out new home renovations is exhausting work, so time for a nap before lunch. One of the chimps relaxes on a climbing hose, then an aerial view as a car approaches the Monkey World site. At the top of the park, there's an important arrival. Ruby the marmoset from Grimsby has made the long journey south with Alison. She's absolutely brilliant. We've put her in the box and she's traveled down, had snacks along the way. I'm really impressed. She's quite a strong little character. We just have to hope she's going to be as good with the marmosets. After a long debate about which group Ruby might get along with, the care staff have two adult males in mind, Jock and Colin. Jock is older by two years and the pair have a sort of father-son relationship. The hope is that Ruby will bond with Jock and accept Colin as part of the family. The question is whether or not Jock is dominant enough over Colin that Colin will act subservient and that the three of them might go together. Otherwise, it might split up just into a pair, her pair bonding with one of them or the other. Despite the upheaval, Ruby seems totally unfazed. She's tubby. I don't think anything's going to stop her eating, so... For the first day and night, Ruby will be in a bedroom opposite Jock and Colin. That way, they'll get used to the sight and smell of each other before they meet. It's very different from the life Ruby's left behind. She would go out the cat flap and over to the neighbours next door who were an elderly couple and say hi. And so when they'd come home, she'd either be returned to the house or she might be visiting next door. Are we ready? Yeah. Come on, Bruce. Come on, then. Take time, Steph's coming. Come on, then. Right, we're well. Well. Okay. All right. Hey, Bruce. Ruby is straight into her new home. She's remarkably swift and agile for such a well-built marmoset. She peers round the bedroom. We were talking earlier about how 500 grams is slightly on the chubby side and around that area. Um, our Miss Ruby has weighed in at 630 grams, um, which is a little on the, the large size, sort of double XL for a marmoset. But she looks pretty healthy despite that. She's moving around really, really well. She's using the enclosure. She's able to leap around on the branches. So I guess over the next few months, while she gets used to our FNAD diet, we'll just work on trying to shave a few of those uh, extra bits off. But right now, she's definitely in the more to love category. All the marmosets in the park get vitamin D3 and calcium for strong bones. Clearly, Ruby has had a substantial diet and spent a lot of time outside, but it's still likely she'll need the vitamin supplement to stay healthy. Delicious. 
She seems like she's taking all of this really in her stride. Her feistiness will be interesting when it comes to introducing her to, to new friends. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy because it's, it's not very nice when they come in and they're obviously terrified of, of what's gone on. So the fact that she's very confident and seems quite sure of herself is, is a good step. Perched alertly on the edge of a basket, Ruby checks out her new surroundings. Next time on Monkey Life. An unexpected arrival is on the way and causing concern at the golden-cheeked Gibbon house. There is no sign of um, that baby coming out naturally. I have actually called out the vet and we're just waiting on him. And it all goes nuts in the capuchin enclosure. A graphic reads, in memory of Jim Cronin... And